Hey everyone, Andrew, day two Dryden, recording here again for day two MTG, and today we are playing Gruel Beatdown, or Red Green Aggro, I'm not sure what, uh, we'll see if this deck even ends up becoming a deck before we start trying to figure out a name for it, in Pi I almost said modern, in Pioneer. Jeez, I'm all over the place already. So uh, if this is the kind of content you enjoy, please do make sure to like, share, comment. Most importantly, most importantly, do yourself a favor, subscribe to the channel. So uh, I also want to say a, a quick thank you to uh, patrons. No new patrons since the last video. However, uh, this new pioneer craze has been pretty crazy on my wallet. <laughs> uh, trying to test cards um see what's viable what isn't specifically in this deck for what i didn't own already veil of summers these things are like six dollars each online and i think they're about the same they might even be more expensive in paper it's insane so again a big thank you to the patrons who support this channel uh and if you enjoy this channel think about it yourself because trust me i was a little, a little bit of sticker shock with these. So thank you to the patrons who helped me pay for those things and support the channel and, and make content like this. So let's get let's get into it. So our, our mana base is red-green. Uh, unfortunately, in this new Pioneer format, like I've said before, the, al the traditionally allied color mana bases, um, they're not as strong as the traditionally enemy paired ones. Because while we do have access to things like Rootbound Craig and Stomping Grounds for our red-green mana fixing, we don't have access to things like uh, like a Copper Line Gorge, that kind of fast land mana. So we kind of have to we have to be a little bit less greedy with our mana base, maybe. And um, so I've, I've got a whole bunch of basics in here as well. Uh, and I've upped the land count a little bit to 21. We've got a few more expensive cards I want to be able to cast. Uh, than in sort of the traditional like burn or, or red deck wins kind of decks that I've been playing. So in addition to the basics here, the red and green basics, though we also have Haship Oasis. We're playing a creature beatdown deck. So largely I haven't found that I'm being out aggroed by people. Um, and we you know might want to power up our creatures. This can effectively if we flood out turn into you know a pump spell or you know if something more you're more familiar with maybe a burn spell right we can turn this land into three damage somehow um and uh, the life gain or the life loss for using it for mana doesn't seem to be mattering too too much but again because of root bound craig i don't want to be going into too many copies of non-mountain non-forest cards same thing with ramunap ruins um it itself can also turn into two damage possibly if we start to flood out a little bit uh, the creatures. So in addition to the 21 lands I'm playing, I'm also playing six copies of these mana dorks, three elvish mystics, three Lanoir elves, because we want to jump into these three mana spells as early as we possibly can. The Ancroft, well here, you know what, we'll get to those in a minute. We want to jump into our three mana spells. Um, we also have four, uh, four copies of Legion Loyalist, a great beatdown card, really makes it easy or hard for your opponents to trade with your creatures in combat and fights through a whole bunch of damage. Wild Slash is kind of just there to fill up the curve, uh, removal, or, you know, it can go to the face as well. In addition to being able to sort of move creatures out of the way, we've got Earthshaker Kenra, a great card from its own standard environment. 2-1 uh, with Haste, when it comes into play, a creature with power less than or equal to its power can't block this turn. So you put like something like a Legion Loyalist down on turn one, attack, they put out maybe like a blocker of some kind, you put out your Earthshaker Kenra, you get in with the Legion Loyalist and the Kenra, they can't block. And then it's also, uh, again, a little bit of flood protection here because it can come back uh, from the graveyard it might be a little bit too small for the camera to see it's got something called eternalize for six mana what that means is this card gets exiled from the graveyard and a copy a zombie jackal warrior token copy of this card comes into play except the token is a 4-4 and it still has that can't block ability so anything with four power or less we can target that won't be able to block this turn again get in with our our creatures and damage. Atarka's Command. Oh, I've missed this card. Oh, do I love Atarka's Command. I have missed this with my Wild and the Cattles and my Monastery Swift Spears, but this card still has a very warm place in my heart. Um, 
I definitely uh, pray at the altar of Atarka. Um, a lot of text on this thing. Opponents can't gain life. Uh, Atarka's command deals three damage to the, each opponent. You can put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield, or creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and reach until end of turn. You get to choose two of those options. So, worst case scenario, it's usually like a skull crack. Best case scenario, it usually ends up dealing three damage to the opponent, plus maybe like another, you know, three damage if you got, you know, three creatures on board and you're attacking in. Very, very useful, useful card. And Crop Crasher, a great one-two punch with the Earth Shaker Kenras. This thing comes down on turn three. It has haste, and you can choose to exert it, which means it won't untap during the next untap step of yours. And if you do that, it also will prevent opponents' creatures from blocking. We then have Bone Crusher Giants. I like this because it can be a removal spell. It's also a little bit of pseudo card advantage if you stomp an opponent's creature and then still have the Bone Crusher Giant afterwards. The 4-3 body is very relevant in this beatdown deck and of course the targeting it with uh, spells to damage claws can be very good in attrition based matchups or against things like burn. We also have a, a couple copies of Rampaging Ferocidon, one in the sideboard, one in the main deck. And uh, another card that was, well, we never really got to see what it was like in its standard lifetime because it was banned for pretty much the entire time. Uh, no idea why. I guess Wizards was just like, oh, all these red decks are actually having a chance of competing. Better ban this card. So it's a 3-3 with Menace. And uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, Rampaging Ferocidon deals one damage to that creature's controller. So we are probably going to take a little bit of damage from this thing, but it's great against token strategies. It's great against go-wide strategies our opponents might be using. And if we are smashing their creatures out of the way, or sorry, stomping their creatures out of the way with a Bone Crusher Giant, uh, this can be great. And then, of course, this thing also prevents players from gaining life while it's on the battlefield. So big fan of that. Oh, and again, these are these three drops I was talking about earlier that I totally forgot to mention. So we got and Crop Crasher, potentially Bone Crusher Giant if we don't want to use the Stomp, the Ferocidon. This thing also, I'm a huge fan of Gruel Spellbreaker. I was really excited when this was spoiled for Modern. Um, you know, I guess it was almost a year ago now. It just wasn't quite enough, um, in my opinion, to make its way into Burn. Um, but a 3-3 three, three for 3 with Haste, sorry, a 3-3 three, three for 3 with Trample, um, that you can have come in with haste or come in as a 4-4 creature. Gives you a lot of versatility, gives you a lot of flexibility. On top of that, when it's your turn, this creature has uh, hexproof, as do you. So things, I mean, we, I haven't seen it in Pioneer yet, but I mean, it could be a thing. Things like uh, secure, not secure the wastes. Uh, what's the one? Um, oh man, that's so bad. I can't remember the name of the card. Uh, two generic, two white, exile all attacking creatures. You get to put basics on the battlefield for each creature exiled this way. I don't know why I can't think of the name, but basically, uh, you know, yourself and, uh, creature and this creature, it has to be answered on your turn or sorry, it has to be answered on their turn pretty much, uh, which makes it more awkward with their mana because on your turn, this thing isn't really going to be able to be dealt with. Uh, a couple of Rhythm of the Wild. I also like this three drop. It gives every creature, every non-token creature you play Riot. So it can come in with either a plus one, plus one counter or haste. Most of our creatures have haste already as it is. So basically it means we're going to be just pumping up our creatures or being able to like give haste to our Bone Crusher Giants and things like that. Oh, sorry. And the other part, creature spells you control can't be countered. So any of those nasty control decks that have been bothering me so much, no, no counter spells for you. Be gone. One copy of Hazaret. It's very possible this should be two copies. I am not sure on any of the numbers here. It's very possible that I should be playing with fewer uh, mana dorks, maybe more of them. Maybe these wild slashes should be something else. Maybe there should be two Hazarets. I'm really not sure about a lot of the numbers here. This is, I'm still in deck testing uh, mode, but I wanted to make a video um, because everyone's trying to get Pioneer content. Um, but yeah, so you could go to two Hazarets, I think. Really like Hazaret. I don't want too many. The curve is a little bit higher <clears throat> than I might normally like. So Hazaret might get a little clunky. 
For that reason, I only have one. We also have collected companies. Other than Hazaret, it hits every creature in our deck. Um, and really, really good to play around those uh, those control decks as well. Gore Clan Rampager, we, again, a little bit of flood protection. We can just cast this as a 4-4 with Trample for 4 if we need to. Or we can use it as a, a pump spell. And effectively, it's, it's almost like... If we are getting in with our creature plan the way we want to, it's almost like a red-green version of Boros Charm where we're dealing four damage to the face, uh, except it gives our creatures trample and stuff too. So it's possible that it can act even as like a removal spell and a burn spell in one in the best cases of in the best scenarios. So hopefully we see some of that. Again, I am not sure about the numbers. I gotta become a mitts in there just to be cute. Seemed like a card that might be good. Not really sure. A little bit harder to turn on with fetch lands and stuff, but it could potentially be a one green deal six damage card. Um, you know, I'm looking at it right now and I'm seriously considering putting like a second hazard in instead of this. Because this actually feels a little bit too cute now. Okay, you know what? We'll see if I get punished for that. I'm going to put a second hazard in. I like hazard a lot. Uh, I mentioned the Ferocidon, same deal, sideboard, Veil of Summer, super expensive, so hopefully we see some value out of this. Any black or blue decks are going to be, like, they are going to hate this card. It draws a card, it counters their spells, and it makes our guy, and, and it just basically counters and draws a card for one green mana. It's fantastic. They go to Fairy, bounce your dude, nope, sorry, I'm going to counter that. And I'm going to get to draw a card out of it. They're going to go removal spell. I'm going to go, nope, sorry. Uh, guys have hexproof now and I get to draw a card. They're going to go, I don't know. There's a million things. This card is so, so good against any deck running black or blue. It's fantastic. <laughs> Similar with uh, Heroic Intervention over here. We are obviously very... <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting a little... <coughs> Oh, a little bit of a dry throat there. That Earl Grey tea is delicious, though. Um, similar to that card, uh, similar to Veil of Summer, our permanents, our creatures, are very key to us winning these games. We don't have burn spells just go to their face. We need to build and protect our board presence. For that reason, I also have copies of Heroic Intervention. You want to play Supreme Verdict? Go ahead. Can't be countered? Doesn't matter. I don't need to counter it. I'm just going to give my guys Indestructible instead. How about that? We also have a little bit of enchantment and artifact hate in Cinder Vines and Destructive Revelry. Again, cards very close to my heart. I'm very much enjoying that. And a little bit of removal. It's very possible that this should be something else. <clears throat> now that I'm looking at it, um, you know what? Maybe this is a bit cute. Actually, okay. You know what? Here, I'm going to remove the Savage Stomps. And instead, what I'm going to add in are the... Uh, the searing bloods i don't love the double red but i have a two mana card versus a three mana card i feel like that might be all right i don't know that i feel like that is oh and i still only have 14 cards in my sideboard okay so uh after just sort of scanning my cards quickly again not sure exactly what i want or don't want i added in a kari zev skyship raider into the sideboard as well um, there might be some decks where I just want to put more creatures in, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try this out. Seems like it might be good enough. First Strike Menace makes a 2-1. Seems to work with most of our cards pretty synergistically. Again, not quite sure how I want to build this deck. I need to test. I need to see what other people are playing. Um, I mean, worst case scenario, how bad can just playing monsters and attacking into our opponents be? Seems like a pretty straightforward game plan so hopefully it works out hopefully we get to see some fun gameplay um oh sorry i didn't finish talking about all these cards um yeah i guess all that's left is pithing needle there are planeswalkers and all kinds of other crazy stuff around death right shamans um yeah lots of crazy stuff so i guess the control decks if i want to bring one of these in uh oko uh, teferi all those crazy all those crazy things uh, might even be good to add more of these. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure how to build this yet. I'm still testing, but I'm trying to bring you people the content you want. So, with all that said, this has been Andrew, Day 2 Dryden. Thanks to the patrons helping me 
afford all these crazy expensive cards. Thank you, great viewers, for being uh, loyal, <laughs> loyal viewers of this channel. <coughs> Uh, we're going to go into a Pioneer League, and I will see you in round one. Playing first, I like it. This hand, this hand's a little heavy on red, but turn one Lanowar Elf into turn two, I don't know, whatever we need. That also seems pretty good, so I, I'm definitely keeping this hand. But this hand could use a bit more red mana. I am definitely going to be want to be playing multiple red spells um, on each of these turns. So for that reason, uh, I'm going to use the uh, Stomping Ground. Actually, you know what I should have done maybe even? Uh, you know what, maybe I should have even just cast like a Legion Loyalist or something. That might have been smarter. But uh, honestly, our three drops are just so incredibly powerful, I think, and like speed us up. I think the chance of drawing one next turn makes this a better play. Especially when I don't know what I'm up against. But I really do wish this forest were oh, a copper line gorge or something. The lack of red-green dual lands is a real thing. Okay, so scratch that. We're not even we're not even going to be casting our Legion Loyalists. That thing is one hundred percent gonna eat a wild slash. That thing has to go away. Has to go away. Which is really awkward because again, if we don't draw a red source, like I'm not, I'm not just attacking with this Lanowar Elf. That's super awkward. Really want to draw a red source or a three drop. Red source, it is. I am a okay with that. So how do we want to do this now? I guess just Legion Loyalist, Wild Slash, get in. Yeah, seems good to me. Okay. Just keep their board clear, and why am I... Oh, right, I was like, why am I at 17? Oh, yeah, because of the stomping ground. That's how that works. All right. So this Lanowar Elf is definitely not supposed to be a beatdown creature, but hey, you know what? It's a 1-1. One -one. It has the ability... It, it Lanowar Elf is a potential win condition. Ooh, okay, interesting, interesting. All right, again, so play the land, and you know what? I'm just gonna get these out of my hand here. Let's just get these going. Creature beat down it is. Man, I would lose so hard to like an electricery or something, something that dealt one damage. I don't, I haven't seen like any of that in this format, but I mean, I have a lot of one toughness creatures on the board right now. <laughs> that would be really awkward. They put a card on top of their library. So whatever whatever they saw, they liked. This is the funny part about this creature. It does have to target something. So even if it targets itself, like it, it has to target a creature. What are you gonna shoot? What are you gonna shoot? You shoot my Earthshaker Kenra, that's fine. I'm I will eternalize that thing later on in this game. It will come back. It will come back. If you hit one of my goblins, well, so be it. And if you hit my elf, oh, okay, my opponent has disconnected. But if you hit my elf, well, I've got another one. And I kind of don't really need any more mana. Another reason to make sure to empty out your hand uh, well, it's not super relevant, but Hazaret is a, a, a strong, strong card. So, you know, if you get, if you draw Hazaret with a bunch of cards in hand, that's that's pretty awkward. But Okay, so our opponent has finally decided to come back, and he is... Well, sorry, shouldn't say he. They are, uh, are in fact, shocking. Our poor defenseless goblin. It's okay, Legion Loyalist. I won't forget. We will remember your sacrifice. I guess technically you weren't sacrificed. You were answered by a piece of removal. I would like to attack now. There we go. If our opponent hadn't disconnected a few times there, I would have thought they were trying to give me the old uh, the old stutter step. You know, the old off-speed pitch, hoping I'd just click through my turn or something. But 
That is very on brand for me lately. Unfortunately for you, it didn't work this time. Temple of Epiphany. Okay. So our opponent's setting up something here, maybe. We uh I'd like I'd like some power to come out. I would like a Hazaret. Uh what else would be a good draw here? Um I don't know. We we need some power. We need to start we need to start closing this game out. Okay, yeah, they're doing the cycling thing. So this is maybe like a I'm thinking like Arclight Phoenix, Crackling Drake, those kind of cards. Uh, that's a good one. That is a good one. I am happy to see that. Please don't have a spell pierce. Please do not have a spell pierce. If this lands on the board, things will be very good for us. Excellent. And now I can even do this. Um... Oh yeah, in my mind it didn't work that way. In my mind I got to do both of these things. But I guess we'll give it haste. All right. So every one of our top decks now is very strong. Uh, I don't, this deck doesn't seem like a, like a counter spell deck. I mean, they'll probably have them in the sideboard or something like that, but just based on what's in the main deck here, I'm not, I'm not thinking too many counter spells, but even just being able to give every creature that we draw riot from this point on is very strong. See, again, they're just cycling cards. Like, they're trying to find something. They I think they know they're in trouble, um, which makes me feel more confident. Okay, so I'm assuming that's what you drew this turn, since it doesn't really make sense to do it the other way. Four cards in hand. No attacks. Okay, good stuff. Come on, something good. Um, that's not my favorite, but you know what? It'll do. It'll do. Obviously, it already has haste, so we give it a plus one, plus one counter. And, you know, it looks to me like we are the aggressor here. So even if they just eat a creature or two, um, go for it. You want to block one of my elves or my other legion loyalist or something? Fine. I am going to try to close this game out. I mean, this could go a little poorly, right? Depending on what they... Okay. That's also pretty good. I was trying to think, like, if they go, like, removal spell into block. Yeah, that could be bad. They're definitely not lacking mana. They're just, like, flooding out. They have four cards in hand. How bad could they be flooding out? I will say this. One thing about these decks... Uh, because I've played them a bunch of times. They can be extremely dependent. Ooh, that's a strong card. They can be extremely dependent uh, on having creatures on the board. So when you're only playing with like 12 or 16 creatures, you know, like Swift Spears, um, <sighs> Swift Spears, Soul Scar Mage, things like that, if you don't have any in your hand, I mean, you, you, you can't just use shocks to kill me from 17 life that's that's not going to do it okay so starting to develop a board this isn't going to be enough i don't think though um you've got to have a removal spell or something here otherwise i i can just attack around you with these creatures okay well there's the shock so what are they hitting with it yeah okay sure one of the only things they can't profitably block so I guess they leave both back. I mean, I still, you you don't have good blocks here, still. Okay, I think I just win now, don't I? Doesn't that mean that I just win? Block this one, take three. I think that was a miscalculation. Unless I'm missing something. Yeah, I don't think I'm... Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. 
So, as I mentioned, that deck is going to be pretty reliant on, um, on their creatures. So I will bring in Searing Bloods. Um, I'm not sure what else they're really going to have, though. Um, what do we not really need or want? We might not need these Rhythm of the Wilds. I don't know how many counter spells they're going to have. They seem more like an aggro deck, like a, like a blue-red Delver style deck. They might bring a couple counter spells in, but I don't think so. I, if they do bring in counter spells, I don't know. It feels like they would have more like a spell pierce than, you know, essence scatters, things like that. So I think I can take those out. Um, I don't think we need Pithy Needle. We could go with Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer doesn't... Okay, I said pretty much any blue or black deck. The problem is their removal is going to be red. And I'm again, I said I'm not worried really about their counter spells, I don't think. I could bring in Heroic Intervention. I could bring in Ferocidon. I don't really want to up my curve, though. Um, I kind of think we're pretty good as is. One other thing uh, I mentioned in the previous Pioneer video, but not this one. I am getting absolutely killed at school lately. I do not have time to edit the videos and break them up the way I wanted to. So unfortunately, this is going to be one big long video. And I'm really, I'm just going to take the sections in between the games and in between the rounds out. And that's pretty much it. I'm just going to let the camera roll other than that. Um, so if you're wondering why the format has changed, the video format has changed, that's why. We are seeing why our mana base is a little bit weak here and has a little bit of rough patches. If even one of these was a red source uh, or a red green source, I think I'd probably keep this hand uh, as it is we have to mulligan. Fortunately, our opponent mulliganed as well. Uh, this hand is much better. We start with a Mystic. We can go Bone Crusher Giant or... Um, I'd probably go with Bone Crusher Giant. I, I doubt I would use the Rampager on turn two and then start to empty out our hand. Oh, and we have to get rid of a card too actually so what do we want to get rid of i don't want to get rid of hazaret or the mystic or the bone crusher i guess i can get rid of the gore clan rampager it's a i don't really see using it effectively on this early, on these early turns um i think that's the one i get rid of uh, opponent kept a six card hand so let's see what they've got cooking Okay, let's try to draw a Wild Slash. That would be nice. I would play that instead of the Mystic if I were to draw it. Um, okay, so how do I lay this out? Because I really do want to try and get rid of the Soul Scar Mage uh, if I get the opportunity. With And the only way I can do that right now is with a Stomp. So, well, I, the Legion Loyalist doesn't even do anything. It can't even attack in. So if I go Mystic Pass, they kill it, attack in, I go Stomp, turn three, I can possibly do a couple things. Yeah, okay, let's let's sort of, I don't really like taking damage if I don't have to. Yeah, let's, let's force their hand, let's, let's, let's get this out. I could, maybe the, maybe the Loyalist is better, maybe that's a better... Maybe that's a better card to eat a removal spell if they are, in fact, going to use one. Then again, if they don't have a removal spell and I'm trying to empty out my hand for something like Hazaret, um, I mean, that's definitely that's definitely uh, strong. We also have to get rid of the Soul Scar Mage before Hazaret comes out because Hazaret has Indestructible. However... The Soul Scar Mage means that minus one, minus one counter is going to go on it, not just regular damage, which will kill Hazaret. So we should probably keep that in mind. If they have a removal spell, I feel like they'll use it here. Yeah, I am not blocking. I am 100% not blocking. Nope. Come on, use a removal spell so I can just kill this next turn and not have to worry about anything. Oh, what do they do with the temple? 
Uh, they put a card on top. Yep. Sure. That's fine. Three damage that isn't going to my face. That's okay. I can live with that and then killing the Soul Scar Mage. It's not often on the control deck, but in this particular matchup with this particular rollout, uh, that is definitely what it feels like I am. And uh, we're obviously going to do this before they have a chance to untap. Be gone with you, Soul Scar Mage. Be gone, I say. Another nice interaction here is that the Bone Crusher Giant, while we can still cast it on our turn, it isn't actually in our hand. So even though it's like sort of we have access to it as a spell, it doesn't prevent Hazaret from being able to um, attack or block or anything like that. Okay, they're down to two cards in hand. Like I said, these decks can be very strong, but um, they sort of depended on their creatures. And without cards like um, Manamorphose, Manamorphose is one of the cards that just completely ties this deck together in, like, say, modern. Um, yeah, it's it's a big, big difference. I guess the best thing I can do with my mana here is just play out the Bone Crusher Giant. I mean, if that's how they want to play this, then so be it. Let's just cast this Bone Crusher Giant. If they got a removal spell, sure. It'd have to be something like a Lightning Strike. Okay, yeah. Or if they want to... Uh, just attack this in, and yeah, I, I can I can live with that too. There was something to be said for casting the Loyalist, like I said, because um, it gets cards out of our hand. So, um, Hazaret becomes more playable. Sure. We are forcing them to interact with our board, and our creatures are soaking up a ton of damage and emptying their hand. They got one card left in hand. I, I've been on the other side of this kind of battle so many times. It is absolutely frustrating. Oh, that's... Okay, well, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, too. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? Yeah, I guess I will assume they don't have a one mana spell that can save this Swift Spear. I guess I'll do that since they didn't cast it last turn. Excellent. I thought about playing around it, but since they didn't cast anything else last turn after killing the Bone Crusher Giant, it just didn't seem to me that it would be super likely. So they either have like a slightly expensive card in their hand or something that requires, um, uh, not revolt, spectacle. Maybe they've got uh, Skewer the Critics or something like that. Just sort of a clunky spell with what they have going. And we're at 14, I mean, they're at 17 life. But hey, guess what? Our Hazaret is about to come down and, and start making their life very, very difficult. Although, I don't know what they're going to play for four mana. That does frighten me a little bit. If it's something like a... Uh, Mad, not madcap experiment. The red enchantment that lets you cast the top of your library, but not your hand. Or something like a crackling drake or something. Or actually, no, crackling drake wouldn't even be bad. They only have two... They have two creatures and two instants in their graveyard. That's it. Oh, or this could be like an Arclight Phoenix. All right, whatever. I'm just going to stop guessing. How about we just wait and see what it is? I don't know why it isn't resolving or going on the stack yet, but let's just wait and see. All right, so I don't know what happened there. Maybe our opponent tried to cast something and then undo it and the game wouldn't let them or something, but we just sort of went to our next phase and they are they're tapped out. Nothing happened. So I don't know what that means. It's a new format. It's possible this person um, 
hasn't played Magic Online before, so maybe that's part of it. Well, let's see if we can uh, close the game out a little, a little quicker and uh, sort of get things going, as it were. Ooh, cast our Hazaret, swing for damage. If my opponent hadn't disconnected twice earlier in this round, I would seriously, seriously suspect that they were trying to uh, to scum me out of an attack step here. I would seriously, seriously suspect that. But here we are. So, what do we wanna do? You know what, let's get the Llanowar Elves out, I guess. I mean, it's gonna increase the clock, it's gonna make Hazaret easier to cast, it's gonna make it easier to use this Ramunap Ruins. Uh, let's just put stuff on the board. I don't think, when they've, when they've got nothing on the board, I don't think it feigns. Um, I don't know what I'm representing, right? Like if, uh, there's no bolts in this format, right? It might be like a shock or something. I guess hypothetically, I if I'm holding up a dual land and a card in hand, they could try and play around, you know, another wild slash or something. But I don't know. Let's just let's see what happens here. Opt. All right. Should try to find something good. I mean, they could have a bounce spell or something, right? That would be a reason to get the Lanor Elves out of my hand. It would make uh, it would make Hazaret a bit clunky if they were able to bounce uh, bounce that brazen borrower or unsummon or I don't know. Okay, treasure cruise. Okay, that's a strong card. Basically refilled their hand, but I mean, I'm about to smash you down to four, and. Uh, with my Ramunap Ruins, you're effectively at two. So, oh, that's also a strong card. Yep. Also very strong. You know what? I have Haste Creatures. It's possible I should have just cast it there, but I was going to try to... I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till my opponent's end step. But because I have so many Haste Creatures in the deck, it is possible that maybe I should have just cast that before... Uh, before going to attacks. All right. So since, okay, there we go. I was going to say, since the opponent's making this drag out, which I'm not really a big fan of, um, I uh, was on Twitter yesterday, and just after I was testing some of these decks and playing some, some practice games, one of the decks I was playing was a deck similar to what our opponent is playing. And I found that in a format that doesn't have lava spikes or bolts, right, everything is sort of a wild slash or a shock, you are very dependent on your Swift Spears and your like Soul Scar Mages getting in for, for those extra points of damage. You're really, really dependent on squeezing those extra damage points out. So what happens, I've found, is that if you know you end up making a, you know a three four Swift Spear out of you know shock into skewer the critics into skewer the critics or something like that. Uh, or you play something like Crash Through that doesn't actually deal any damage. It just cycles itself. Um, and let's say the 3-4 Swift Spear, you know, gets hit with a Fatal Push or something along those lines. It's hard to see a situation in which you don't just lose. It's really hard 
to come back from those games where a Swiss Spear isn't getting in for like four or five damage. That's a strong card. I love Storm Chaser Mage. I am a huge, huge fan of Storm Chaser Mage. I I wish it were more modern playable. Oh, uh, what do I do here? Like, I can just deal them damage so easily. Okay, well, we're just... Like, I just hit them for four, and then... Okay, as much as I want to cast this Collected Company, I'm... I'm just going to do this. Like, I'm not even going to let them have a chance to counter it. I'm going to untap, and then... Like, it's... It, I don't know. Good luck. Yeah, there you go. Like, come on, man. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say man. The name is Chris and the thing, but again, could be it. Could be a she. Could be a they. My apologies to to anyone there. Force of habit. So hey, we won the match. All right, I'm gonna have to cut out a whole bunch of dead sections of that game. So I was just talking about how I don't have time to do too much editing, and to make this watchable, I'm gonna have to cut out all those disconnections and giant chunks of game so awesome either way we're one and oh with red green beatdown hazaret came to save the day if that were a um a become immense it's very possible that wouldn't have happened so i definitely like hazaret i i'm already glad that i put two copies instead of one in the deck and uh we're gonna go into round two this is the good stuff. This is the hand that we're trying to get here where we go turn one elves into like turn two gruel spellbreaker and just get our opponent dead. Look at all this awesome interaction we've got. We are on the play. And uh, this is a on the play kind of hand. This is a get your opponent dead and, uh, you know, just, just race them. See what they got. Okay, well, they could fatal push us here. So, Thoughtsies! Yeah, that does it too. Even if they thought sees me though, like what? Like you just took two damage. I mean, I guess you take the Gruel Spellbreaker, but I mean, I'm just gonna cast an Ancrop Crasher next turn. I'm happy with that. Yeah, like you gotta, you pretty much have to take the Spellbreaker, don't you? Oh, that's a good draw too. So yeah, just gonna, just gonna get this uh, this fellow on the board here and go to go to Beat Town. Take that, Baj. Baj sounds like a Arnold Schwarzenegger villain or something. Oh, Pack Rat. Okay, all right. So uh, I, uh, when I said we're gonna race, I mean, you know, hey, I, I, I guess that is in fact what we are going to do. Well, that was a very good draw. Uh, wait, hold on. So this. Uh, yeah, we have to pay the two life, unfortunately, but whatever. And if you want to block, I am all over that. I am all over you blocking. The fellow that we played in the last round has sent me a message, and I do not have time to check it. Um, okay, so what modes do we want here? We want three damage and plus one, plus one. Oh, and they also get reach. I am taking damage from my mana base, which I'm not really happy about, but you know what? What are we getting in for? <laughs> yup, that's, uh... Yeah, that, that... Yeah. That's... That's strong. Alright. We're not out of it yet, though. We are not out of it yet. Are they casting that? Uh, that doesn't save you. I have an Atarkas command. Do they even have good blocks? No, they have no blocks. Okay, we've got it. Fantastic. Why do our opponents keep doing this? They, the, the same thing happened in the last round. They just... They gave us lethal and they just... I mean... I don't know. Whatever. Here, you know what? Oh, I don't have time to check what the... Okay. I'm gonna see what the fellow said. Uh... I'm going to see what the person said in the message in between the games. I don't have time to check this right now. So, Pack Rats. Oof. Okay, well, we want Vela Summers for all their removal. Um, I 
think we'll probably want, I don't know if we need the indestructible. This is more for like board wipes and things. I feel like the four Vela Summers is probably already good enough. I'm thinking Searing Bloods. And you know what, maybe I should put something to deal with larger creatures in here as well. Like, uh, actually I guess that's what those uh, Savage Punches or whatever and uh, I had on the sideboard originally, Or, but I could put something like uh, Lightning Axe in as well. Maybe that's a good idea. I don't think I want Kari Zev. We've probably got pretty good interaction already. Oh, although you know what? They could be bringing in stuff like Kalidus or uh, that other life gain thing. So actually, I'm going to put a Ferostodon in. What do we not want? What are we willing to scrap? I got seven cards I got to take out. Okay, well, Pack Rat scares me. I won't lie. So I want to leave my removal in. And. Uh, this is basically almost like counter spells. I don't think I need Collected Company. Maybe I can do without that. Here, you know what, we'll take out two Rampagers. I'll take out one Collected Company. I wanna go down on, yeah, I wanna, I wanna be able to hold up interaction. Still four more cards, huh? I like Bone Crusher Giant as, again, removal. I can take out one Crasher. Keep these in. You know, this is... I can take out these rhythms. They're not going to have counter spells. So one more card. Yeah, not having played this deck before is making the sideboarding a bit awkward. I don't know. I don't know what I want to take out. How many creatures? I still have 27 creatures. Okay. Ah, I can take... Ah, Legion of Lilith is strong. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'll only put in three Veil of Summers. That might be a mistake. It might be the best card in this matchup. So maybe that's a mistake. But we'll see how this game plays out and then we'll reevaluate. Again, I do not know this format. Uh, turn two on Crop Crasher again? I mean. It's got it's got creatures and it it races. This this hand races again. So yeah, sure. Sure, let's keep this. And we've got our mana. That's the important thing. Being able to have double red and double green. I've definitely been uh, mana screwed a few times with this deck already. I really really wish we had access to another quality red green land but we we uh we just don't uh keep it so let's see how this goes even if we get like thought seized or something i mean we can pretty much empty our hand by turn two it's not going to be super powerful mostly mana dorks but it basically means i don't know turn three hazard or something maybe all right, so they're holding up a fatal push or something, it looks like. That's strong. Uh, yeah, we got to take damage off this. And... Sure. That's what I'm thinking. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. That would kill our Hazoret. So I'm glad that that got out of the way. Oof. All right. Um, you know what? Let's get that beat down going on. You're giving me a free pass here. I'm gonna get my beat down going, and then at, and then if you even if you put anything onto the board next turn, I'll use my on crop crasher. I'm gonna make it so it can't block. Smash in for like another five. Seems good to me. Seems good to me. Death Touch and Lifelink. Yeah, I don't like that. That's fair. All right. So that's a little frustrating. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Three toughness creature. That's pretty awkward. Yeah, you know what? I think we're just going to keep flooding the board.
And then next turn. See what happens. I don't love this, but I mean. Yeah, maybe I should. Okay, so that's interesting. Maybe I should look at putting. Uh, oof, okay. Maybe I should look at putting lightning axes or um, skewer the critics or something like that in the deck to deal with that. Hmm. Well, we're going to empty out our hand here. And it's got to be three creatures, right? Yeah, so we just got to sit back and see what we can do. I mean, it's not the worst thing. When lifeblade zombies enter, it reveals their hand, green or white creature, and exile it. Okay, so that's not the worst. That gives me a good target here. So, I mean, they'll... Right? I, I, there's nothing... This doesn't change anything, right? Yeah, okay, so, sure. If you want to exchange your Aetherborn for one of my cards and whatnot, then I'll, I'll give you the option. But... I don't really care about this Lifebane zombie, to be honest. The Aetherborn is quite frustrating, though. Actually, wait, it can't block next turn. Yeah, no, it can't block next turn. So if it block, yeah, if any of these block, they all have first strike. Fantastic. First strike goes in, and then we can searing blood it. Please block. This thing came down on turn two, and it hasn't attacked or blocked. Uh, like, that's fantastic. Right? I'm not... This thing doesn't have... Something I'm forgetting, right? Some crazy ability, like, protection from or something? Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Take whatever. What is this? Oh, God. Uh, that's not good. That is a strong card. So I need my Rampaging Ferocidon to show up is what I is what I need to have happen. However, again, we do just get to attack in basically for free because they can't block anything. Oh, that's also pretty strong. So, I'm getting in for five here. I mean, it's kind of crazy how this Searing Blood has made this so awkward for them. Okay. Okay, you're going to make me choose one or the other. All right, well, uh, I think this thing has to go away. I think this thing is, I mean, this is whenever a Swamp enters, right? It is two life, though. Yeah, I, I think this gifted Aetherborn has to be the one that goes away. Uh, okay, so... And... Uh, yeah, down to four. Okay. Alright, well, there you go. If I get to untap with this collected company, though, that's going to be strong. So just don't thought seize me. Uh, that doesn't, that doesn't frighten me. Oh, that's also very good. Uh, does that mean we just win? I think that means we just win. God, a Atarkas Command is so good. It's so good. 
Okay, so they're at one because of the Atarka's command. And then all of these are two twos. So, yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape here. Uh, three damage, creatures plus one, plus one. Bam. Bam! Woo! All right. Well, that was a lot faster than uh, the first match. So, uh, Chris Bowden has said, aren't you day two MTG? Yep. I certainly am. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, well, uh, it's like 9.30 at night. Oh, you can see it right there. It's like 9.30 at night here. I'm exhausted, so I'm going to keep playing this. Uh, not to be rude to Chris. All right, so hi there, Chris. Hopefully you enjoyed the match. Uh, since you reached out to me, I'll assume you weren't trying to scum me out of an attack step like I suspected. Again, you did have some connection troubles, so I did say that during the match. But uh, make sure to, hey, make sure to subscribe so you can see your own matches. Uh, make sure to tell your friends. So uh, we're going to go into round three with uh, a 2-0 start. It's pretty awesome. I mean, we had a 2-0 start in the last league as well. So let's not uh, count too many chickens before they, uh, you know, hatch out of their eggs. But uh, this has been Andrew, Day 2 Dryden. I'll see you there. All right, I am three for three on winning the die roll, which is normally the opposite of what I am, so I'm going to be pretty happy about that. Uh, this is a strong start. We have double red and double green. We've got a turn one interaction. We've got turn two creature, and we got a couple turn... We actually have a couple turn two options, and uh, turn three is fantastic. So we're absolutely keeping this hand. This is a very strong... Uh, I don't... How do I put it? I don't know super strong, but it's very... This hand has a clear path that it wants to take uh i have no green cards currently in my hand so i am just going to play the ramun app ruins and pass i don't have to take down i'm not going to cast this wild slash if i don't get a target while i would normally do that with like a burn deck because this deck is more focused on being uh more more focused on board presence and attacking i Wild Slash, um, I would rather have it be a removal spell, which will sort of act like a, uh, a damage spell when I can get my creatures through. Oh, so I have the option to either Bone Crusher Giant or Earthshaker Kenra, huh? Uh, they just left up a, a fancy looking mountain. Okay, well, you know what? Let's get some board presents. Let's, uh... Let's... Let's start doing this thing. Really nice if it got in two damage. Hey, it did! Alright, fantastic. I was really worried that was going to eat a wild slash or a, or a shock. Ooh, Steamkin! Yeah, that, that goes away. That is 100% not an okay card to leave on the battlefield. And... Okay, so I can do two things here. I can either Bone Crusher Giant, hold up Wild Slash, or I can Earthshaker, Kenra, and Wild Slash. I think that is a stronger... I think that is a stronger play. Yeah. Okay, either way, this, this has to go. That's... I mean, leaving a Bone Crusher for, like, another Steamkin is a possibility or something like that, but even if they play a third land next turn, um, and, like, this exact sequence, the most they can do is, is make this a 2-2, two -two, so Bone Crusher still answers it. <sighs> Come on, Nick Puikia. Bitch and Nick is making some instant noodles or something. He's like, ah, it's Friday night. I'm going to kick back, eat some instant noodles, step away from the game. I'm not going to type BRB and be polite. There is nothing to think about here. Like, there are turns and game states and, you know, whatever, where you can think things through. But, like, come on. It's not really that big a deal. Like, we all have access to our time, but when I am recording, <laughs> entertaining folks like yourselves, 
it becomes hard to just talk about stuff to no foreseeable end. All right. This one's going to make this one not be able to block. How you like that? Come on, you two. Stay back there. I am not turning this car around. Start getting along. And then next turn, I mean, we have a fantastic... Uh, we have the potential for a fantastic turn with an Atarka's Command on this. Instead, we are going to uh, stomp that. But uh, that works too, I guess. Yeah, we are... It doesn't use my mana very well. That's the one thing I don't really love about that. So, I mean, we're ahead in the life race. So let's say we, so, okay, we stomp it, we take two, and then we hit them for four down to nine. Yeah, all right, that's, yeah, I mean, let's not be too cute here. Let's, let's just, let's just cast the spells. Cast the spells, attack in. Let's not overthink this, Andrew. He's just talking about not overthinking it with uh, our opponent's turn, so... I mean, I could have attacked in and let them, like, block or something, maybe, and then just, uh... Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Yeah, that'll do it. Okay. Okay. Well done. That's, uh, that's a good one. Uh, how do we want to do this? There's so many things we could do. Well, basically, we have the choice between casting this Bone Crusher or casting a Ferocidon. I guess the Bone Crusher is the better play. I mean, if they want to just attack into it, I'm not blocking. And if they want to remove it, that's fine. They can take two damage. And if they want to leave it back on defense, I mean, that's also fine. I will... Attack into it and Atarka's command you. And you will lose your Goblin Chain Whirler. I feel like Bone Crusher Giant is very good in these matchups. Okay, okay. That makes things interesting. Ooh, that also makes things interesting. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not blocking that. That does become dangerous though. Because uh, yeah, here we go, right? See, now this happened. Oh, okay. I thought this was going to be a skewer of the critics. That's okay. I mean, they, they have a lot of cards. Uh, they have access to a lot of cards now, though. Ooh, that's strong. His hand is getting a little awkward. I'm drawing the top end of my curve here. I want, like, a Legion Loyalist. I want, like, two Legion Loyalists or something. Okay, so seven damage. How do we get in seven damage? We have an Atarka's command, so they're at four. You know what? Let's cast an Elvish Mystic. Let's try to set up a strong next turn. So I'm going to cast an Elvish Mystic, and I'm going to hold up an Atarka's command. That's that's my plan at the moment. Then we can do all kinds of crazies. Actually, maybe I should have... Ooh, okay. Mm, yeah. No. Rethinking it, there was the option to Bone Crusher Giant, one of these. Oh, really? <sighs> okay. Oh, and because of the Soul Scar Mage. Oh, this is really bad. This is actually really bad right now. Oh, because of the Soul Scar Mage, it's going to shrink the Bone Crusher Giant. That's not good. All right, so in response then, before anything else happens. Okay, so if we attack his command, it'll save the Mystic. Okay, so I have two options. I can Bone Crusher to kill one of these, or I can use a Tarka's command to save the Mystic, at least until the end of turn. And maybe chump block with it. Oh man. These chain whirlers are really wrecking me. Okay. So. So if we had Tarkus command to go down to four. 
Next turn we can on crop, make it so the chain one of the chain whirlers can't block. Maybe they attack with both. Yeah, I think we want them to attack in. I think that's I think that's what we want to see happen. Because then I can maybe on crop and, and be able to get in here somehow. Um, so three damage, creatures, one one in reach. I'm also paying life for this, which is not great. It turns out that Ferocidon would have probably been really strong to put out when I had the opportunity. All right, so they're tapped out. They are casting this light up the stage, or no. They didn't cast this one. They cast one from hand. So they're gonna lose these two cards, I think, then. Why do I not get to remove these? I don't know what's happening anymore. All right, attack with everything, come on. Attack with all these, all three of these. Ugh. Ugh. All right, what options do we have? Uh, so if we on crop, that can't block. No, they still have really good blocks with this this goblin, uh, this goblin uh, chain whirler here. <sighs> These are really awkward three drops. Okay, uh, Ferocidon will end up being useful. Yeah, let's let's cast Ferocidon, and then maybe next turn with the on crop crasher as well, we have we will have the chance to uh, maybe we'll have the chance to attack in. These chain rollers are, are, are tough right now, though. They are making things awkward. Oh, that's very strong. All right. So... Oh, because they're just in exile. Oh, that's why. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. These are just in exile now. Okay, so I don't have to worry about these. Oh, what am I... I'm not paying attention, right? Wait, hold on. Let me reread this. Okay, sorry. I'm so used to using Bone Crusher Giant. I'm really glad I didn't miss this because the <laughs> the comments section would have lost their minds. Okay, keep in mind these are still new cards to me. I forgot that Bone Crusher Giant can just go to the face. My apologies. Just take that. Let's go to the next game. Sorry. All right. Okay. So, what do we want against red? Uh, men, uh, this seems good, and this seems very good. The um, the chain whirler is going to be tough. The chain whirler is going to be something that I think we're going to have to try to play around. So, with that, uh, Kari Zeb seems a little weak, right? That's not great. So I don't think we want to bring that in. We could, I could bring in something like Heroic Intervention. Let's see what that looks like. All right. So what wasn't great? Um, I think all of these are very strong. The Elves weren't great. They sort of ramped us out, but I, I'm willing to cut a couple of those. I like Rhythm of the Wild to make these bigger, but that's a little bit cute. That's kind of late game. And... Um, our opponents aren't going to have any counter spells, so I, I think I can side those out. Especially if I bring something like this in, I don't want to be too cute. The rest of this is all pretty good, I think. Gore Clan, Gore Clan's cute, but I don't think we're racing this opponent. I think we're sort of more controlly, so maybe we want to take one of those out. I think something like this is probably the way to do it. Oh, you know, I could have brought in something like Pithing Needle to answer the. Uh, The Steamkin, the Runaway Steamkin. This hand is very good. We have a this 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 is a good hand. Oh wait, actually hold on. What are my what's my mana like? I really wish this were a mountain or a red green land, but it's okay. We're, this is still good enough to keep. If I draw, um, 
I draw a three drop, I'll probably play the Mystic turn one. If I don't, let's see, I'd really like to be able to answer that. Okay, so I really want to draw like a Wild Slash now. That's, that is, that, oh, you know what, this doesn't, need, sorry, and this needs one of these to come in untapped. So yeah, we're actually just gonna, we're just gonna do this then. Yeah, that's, that's awkward. What is this thing? Is that plus one plus O card? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that can give you some, that can give you some reach. That's for sure. Oh, okay. See, that's strong. Um, okay, this is really, if I, if I don't block with this, this is really bad. Uh, if they just play a, uh, a goblin chain whirler next turn but i think that if this elvish mystic is going to just block at some point i think it's probably fine to have it um i need to get some value out of this mystic uh, i think it's probably fine to have it block later maybe and soak up more damage with all these stupid prowess triggers and things um, I am not, I am 100% chump blocking. I am 100% chump blocking with this thing. As unfortunate as that is, I think I can get going later on with, with this much sort of redundancy. If they want to play a, uh, a chain whirler after, after this hits the board or something, that's fine. But I, if I start like unloading all of these spells, then the chain whirler just becomes like a three for one and that's that's a bit that's a bit excessive i i don't think i can handle that yeah that's a strong card though that's a very strong card all right maybe i need to devote some more uh some more cards to the burn match or well, the red deck wins matchup where was this last turn ah. Ah. and we're still only have the one red mana which is seriously hurting us So how do we how do we want to do this? Is there any good way to do this? Yeah, we're leaving this mystic back on blocking duty. That's that's how we're doing it. I don't think that's the good thing to do, but we're in uh, we're in a bit of a pickle here. This is definitely pickle territory. Oh come on! All right, well they came prepared for us. That's for sure. Holy. Oof. All right, so I should, it turns out I should have just loaded the board with things that would have died to this Chain Whirler because it hasn't shown up yet. No, that's well-timed. Um, go down to two, then they just do that. So I'll land or a spell, I just lose. Uh, let's, let's, force them to, let's force them to do it. All right, so I think if they have a land, then they can just use this, attack through and kill me. If they have any spell, okay, that won't do it. Okay, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, well, I mean, sure. Uh, I guess this. All right, so they kept an idol on. Well, they were on the draw, I guess that makes sense. Oh, you know what? I could play Hazard or something, but that I still would have. Uh... Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's go to the let's go to the next game. Okay. So what did we learn about that? Um... I don't I don't think we learned much. I think they had a really crazy rollout, and we had a very awkward series of draws. So let's. Uh... Let's try to not have awkward series series of draws. Uh, would you like to play first? I would 100% like to play first. Uh, his hand is a tiny bit awkward, but I think it's fine. I think it's fine enough. 
Yeah, my, I'm going to take damage off my lands. But we, we have the turn to Crasher. Um, dies to Searing Blood pretty bad. But, you know, we, we've got... We've got answers here, or we've got we've got a line of play that, that works for us. Let's see what happens. Strong, this is a strong card. Oh come on, I would like how come I can't draw any of my removal? Where is my removal? <sighs> okay, how do we want to do this? Uh yeah yeah okay uh yeah okay you can't block deal with it all right so we've loaded up the board maybe we can draw a removal spell next turn come on Ugh. Man, those are really, really good. I have two of them. Where are mine? Ugh. Okay. That's not... That's not the worst. We are... We are... Maybe I need to redesign this deck with more red mana. Like, because these don't make red mana, right? So, it's always the red mana that I'm kind of getting choked on. How do we want to do this? How do we want to do this? Let's get a spell breaker out. And let's make it big. Let's force them to have to have, like, uh, something like a lava coil again. What is this? Okay, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you cast a red spell, untap. Tap deals one damage to player or planeswalker. If it's still three or more exile, then come back as a planeswalker. Um, plus one, two damage to player planeswalker, minus two to a creature, and then uh, we'll, we'll deal with the minus seven when uh, when we get there. How about that? Well, on the bright side, you don't have attacks. Wait, what's the tap? Is it player or planeswalker? Yeah, okay. So I ha I can chump block you, and that's fine. All right. Oh, that might be good too. So, I can keep this up as possibly a protection spell as well. Lots of options here. Lots of options. So what happens if I just attack in with the spell breaker? And just leave up all this other stuff. Um... Okay, so hold on. What if I what if I go with loyalist? No, then I can't do this again. I only have the one red mana. That's really the awkward part here. <sighs> okay, what happens if we on crop? And we only, I I want to leave up one of these two things. So I guess I'm leaving up heroic intervention, which means I only have two mana to work with. Which means I'm either casting legion loyalist. Yeah, okay. So I'm attacking in with this, and I'm going to leave up the option to use both of these abilities. So we're going to try to catch our opponent in a poor situation here, but I'm not sure how exactly we're going to do it. Deal one damage to me, okay. Okay. Let's 
searing blood on this one. Tap and tap. That's right, you're gonna go all in on this and I am going to end up with my entire board still. That's what's gonna happen. Shock, what is the shock targeting? Oh my god, this, boy, this, is, this shock is targeting that? Seriously? Uh, why? Okay, let's get this... Okay, you're tapped out. Let's get the stack out of here. Oh, because oh, cause you're... Oh, because you're going to get this thing. That's why. Because it's going to end up having dealt three damage that's why so you're gonna get this planeswalker okay that's that's neat that's cute oh but it won't matter because my permanents are indestructible so yeah go ahead hit them with whatever you want okay so how about this now targeting me okay this is pretty strong. They're getting a lot of damage in on me here. Okay, it's really hard for me to, again, because I'm really tight on red mana, it's hard for me to assume that I'll be able to use Gore Clan and Oncrop next turn. So for that reason... Oh, it's only an attacking creature. Wow. I've never... Okay. I'm glad that it worked out for me anyway, because I was sort of counting on this plus four, plus four. So I'm glad I had that heroic intervention. Wow, that was weird. Uh, okay. So hopefully we draw a red source, which means we can do On Crop Crasher and Gore Clan, which is... Is it almost lethal? It'll be four. Yeah, I can't do anything about that. Um, and I can't do anything here. Oh, come on. Oh, my mana is just killing me today. Okay. Um, all right. So again, I get to do one thing. God, this is so frustrating. I get to do one thing. And this, what, deals two to me? Or, yeah, either two to me or two to a creature. <sighs> um, okay, this is super awkward, but whatever. Uh, I'm going down to six because of this. All right, we're getting rid of the Chandra, and then, I don't know. We need to start drawing mana, specifically mana that doesn't hurt me. These Searing Bloods, these things like this, these are the cards that we kind of needed to draw, and they were very, very fortunate they were able to flip that Chandra last turn. Oh no. Uh, okay. I mean, sure. Well, we're we're blocking. That's there's no question about that. Okay, I really really need I don't know, something good here. Okay, that's probably None of these are mountains or forests. Oh my god. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so if we attack in with everything and we Gore Clan, what's the best we can do? <sighs> oh, 
oh, I can exert. Okay, so I, I can get in for whatever amount of damage I'm able to. So it's three, four, five, six, ten. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. We're so close, but we're like just not quite there. Okay, so let's Oh my god, I have to I'm running out of time. Okay, so I attack in. Let's like I have to hope they have like nothing. Oh no, cuz they have this castle. So both creatures are going to be lethal. So I need to have blockers. So yeah, we're going to attack in. And if uh, if they block, awesome. I'm going to Gore Clan. If they don't, I think I'm still going to... Yeah, I'm still going to Gore Clan. This thing isn't a trample or anything, right? Yeah, no. Okay. Oh, there's been a lot of really tight tight turns in this game and i've been just my man has been so awkward <laughs> so awkward Ugh. oh oh okay uh oh, it's so frustrating i have to go down to three here Okay, can you push damage through? Uh, that looks pretty strong. So I've got to block two creatures. What happens if I just untap? I might... Ooh, yeah, see? Think, think about it. Think about it. See, I don't think that changes anything, because I have the exert ability on this. I think... Wait. No. We're resetting that. I don't think it matters too much, but we might as well have a chance to get that off the board. The other, those other blocks are just bad. Okay, so if I draw... If I draw another... On crop crasher, we're good. Uh, oh, maybe not. Okay. Oh, come on! Uh, <laughs> like, just squeezing me out here. Oh. Oh, does that... That would have been good last turn. Oh, that's not enough, is it? Oh, I don't think that's enough. Okay, well, this does nothing. So we have to play this, right? Yeah, okay, so... Oh man, this is so tight. Oh, and they can use this now. Ah. <sighs> right, yeah, 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 use this. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, oh yeah, and that's it. All right, that's really frustrating. Our mana just totally crippled us that game. Uh, oh, well, I mean, I can't dwell on that too much. We didn't draw any of our removal. We had a heroic intervention, worked out really well the one turn it did. Uh, but yeah, it just, man, any Searing Bloods would have been great all game. Oh, it's frustrating to lose a close one like that. Is what it is though. Maybe I need to put more again. I didn't know I don't know what my numbers are supposed to be Maybe I need to put a few more uh, things in for the burn mat or the 
red aggressive deck matchup in the sideboard. Either way, it's been Andrew. Day two Dryden. <sighs> Again, I'm going to have to cut a whole bunch out of that matchup, I think. The hemming and hawing and uh, thinking that I had to do. So uh, let's go into round four, uh, four. Yeah. Yeah, let's go into round four and see what else we got going on. All right, I officially can't complain about the die rolls for like the next three weeks because I'm I'm four and zero on the die rolls, and this hand is good. Turn one into yeah, we got turn one, turn two, turn three. This hand is uh, this hand is strong. So Targar's command could be a little bit better than paired with this Legion loyalist, but hey, who knows? Maybe we draw a. Uh... Here, how do I have to do this? You know what? I can play a mountain here. Opponent says, "Good luck, have fun." I'll say, "You too." exclamation point um yeah but let's get this legion loyalist out and get get our beat down going yeah you know what I'm, the more i'm thinking about it the more i think that skewer the critics might fit in this deck uh skewer the critics is very it's it's awkward when you have a um it's awkward when you have Sorry, I want to think this turn through here. What are the odds that something happens here? Uh, sure. Please block. Wow, this Autarchus command just became fantastic. Um, Screw the Critics is a little awkward when you've got cards like Swift Spear and you're trying to um you know use it before combat to get prowess triggers and, and things like that so for that reason how do i want to do this yeah you want to flash something else in that's fine um please don't essence scatter this thank you um but in this deck post combat second main phase spells are totally fine um this doesn't yeah sure you want to eat my legion loyalist that's fine i guess i could have held up a tarkas command again but like whatever like you're still taking the three damage okay so you you ate my merfolk trickster or you ate my legion loyalist that's not the worst thing um yeah but in this deck second main phase skewer the critics and things like that can be like very very useful especially the three oh god fasa okay well hey we want to win this game fast so uh oh please attack me please attack me okay uh well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna attack i will absolutely do everything i can to limit your devotion please block Wow, these Atarkas commands are proving to be so good. Alright. I'm going to be a little aggressive because I want to empty out my hand. I want to get stuff on the board. Alright. So you get to scry. You get to pick... You get to pick some stuff here. Actually, what does this card do? I don't actually know what this is. So there's a one with a flash, one with a flying. Okay, interesting. Storm Tamer. Okay. All right, now where's my third Atarka's command? Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty strong, actually. So... Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm just going to try to get this game over with. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Hey, here's the thing. If you go attack with all creatures and you've got these on crop crashers, it will not let you exert. If you want to exert this creature, you have to click it individually. Uh, no, this one can just attack. I can't target this Mutaval right now, unfortunately. This thing can go away, though. Sure, you want to block one of my dudes with your Muta Vault, that's fine. I will, no problem, take take five. You want to, oh, sure, that's even better. All right, 
Okay, they're down to five. Where is my, uh, I don't know, Gore Clan Rampager or, uh, ooh, a Hazaret would be a good draw. Hazaret would be a good draw. I was going to say, I don't think you want to attack here. Oh, that's very good too. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Please don't counter this. I'm like not even play. I'm not even trying to play around counters. I don't know if I can or not. Oh, man. Uh, okay, so yeah. Uh, yeah, 100%. I will 100% offer these up as a trade. Anything to like limit your devotion and keep this Thassa? Sure, that's fine. Go to four. Took a spell out of your hand. Like, I... We, we need to just finish this game. We need to just get this game closed out. Really? You had nothing? I mean, you were scrying like every turn. All right. Okay, cool. Well, uh, blue. Uh, see, this works for like blue removal and stuff. I don't know if it works for... Hmm. Uh, okay, well, Kari Zev is probably going to be good. This is going to be good. Unfortunately... Thassa has Indestructible, so this doesn't do us any good. And I think the Rampaging Ferocidon was good, though. I think that was pretty strong. What's maybe not the best? Um, you know, maybe Kari Zev's... Uh, okay, actually, no, we don't need Kari Zev. We've got enough going on here. Maybe I can trim on these Elves. These Elves aren't especially impactful. What else do we want? Uh, this collected company is probably really strong. I can maybe, you know, maybe I keep trimming on these Gore clans. Maybe, maybe that I should just have two of them in the deck. Maybe that's just a lesson to have, and then I need I don't know, something else. Oh, this is sixty here. What have I done? Oh, I just put these and took those out. Okay. Um, something that would prevent my opponent from blocking would be nice. Okay, this is removal and like a. Pretty good beat stick. It says menace and deals damage when creatures come in, so I like that. I'm basically debating right now between something like Rhythm of the Wild and like Veil of Summer. I don't know if they have any like creature counter spells. I feel like this deck is something that would have like spell pierce and you know negate, things like that. Not sure. Okay, because we're on the draw, I'm going to take out these Rhythm of the Wilds and put in two Veil of Summers. At the very least, it'll be able to counter something like a uh, Siren Storm Tamer uh, activation or something like that. And it's just going to be better on our mana. Uh, I love this hand. We've got two of both colors. We've got a turn one play. We've got like two removal spells. We can keep things. Yeah, this is great. Very happy with this hand. Judge is familiar. Yeah, that's a strong card. I like Judge is familiar. And I'm going to... Eh, as much as I want to get my beat down going, as we saw there, the uh, keeping their board clear... Is a big thing. <laughs> Pay one for judgment. Uh, no. You got me there, opponent. Smuggler's copter. Okay. Okay. I didn't see that coming. That's that's fair. Um. I want to get this out. Okay, so I want to attack with my Kenra. But if I play this out this turn, that means I have. Four mana next turn. Yeah, okay. Because then four mana next turn means I can go like Stomp and Earthshaker Kenra. So I like that. I like that uh, quite a bit. I might actually bring in the Destructive Revelries now that I know this is it. Oh, interesting. Huh. 
Well, it's a little annoying. I don't have the uh, thing this turn, because I'm going to miss my untap step. I'll be able to kill this next turn, but that's too bad. That's that's quite that's quite unfortunate. <sighs> Ditch an island makes sense. Yeah, so I'm not going to have any opportunity. Oh, jeez. Okay, so we're going to just try to spend our mana as best as we can. So we are going to attack in with this next turn. Uh, then maybe we'll be able to uh, use the Kenra as well as the Bone Crusher Giant. So... Let's get some damage in. It's turn three already, and they're just now taking damage for the first time. Oh my god. Yeah, that's strong. Where are my removal spells? I got like one here. I've had two so far. Okay, maybe this deck needs more removal. Maybe that's the lesson I need to learn here. I didn't think a, a stompy deck like this would want something like... A, anger of the gods but i'm starting to think that maybe that should come in in the sideboard <sighs> okay we want the one that's targeting this i guess probably sack this i would imagine sure oh to counter so oh wow okay i didn't even think that through at all Alright, well, you know what, we're adding to the board, we are forcing them to deal with stuff, but yeah, it, yeesh. These tie binder mages are very strong, they're doing a very good job at locking this board down. I need like a searing blaze, sorry, searing blood. Oh, alright. Oh, oh, wow. Like, how do I put this? This is a very strong rollout from this player. These are all very good cards. It makes sense for this to work this way. But something about this just feels really... Where was this all game? Does this untap my things? Because they can't be targets anymore? Probably not, right? Probably not. Uh, uh, let, uh, let's see if they show me anything. Let's see if they show me anything else. I'm thinking that they won't. Maybe I shouldn't have attacked with the Urshaker Kenner. Maybe I mean, I guess I kept hoping that... Oh, you got... <sighs> I'm tempted to not even show them this. Tempted to not even show them this. Like, let's say I draw a card. What's the best thing that I could... What's the best thing that could happen? Because they've got the Smuggler's Copter and this Dijin. Is there anything I can draw that would... Here, you know what? We can find out about the whole targeting thing. Let's try that. I mean, they might even just counter this. But if they counter it, I want to know about it. Actually, okay, here. If I draw an Atarka's command, okay, that's not... If I drew an Atarka's command, I could potentially give my creatures reach and live this turn. But, I mean, that's, like, not... That's not going to be enough, so... Okay. Anger of the Gods definitely going on my maybe list. Sure, show me something else. Let me see what you got. These are all very strong cards. Yeah, okay. Let's... Next game. Next game. All right. So... I will bring in two Destructive Revelry for... for that card. I, I will do that. That's fair. I could also bring in, like, Pithing Needle for it, but I don't think there's anything else. I don't think we really want that. 
So what happened in that game? Was it just awkward? I'm just not drawing... I think I just need to put a bigger emphasis on removal. I'm not drawing my good removal. Like, these Searing Bloods are so good. You know, maybe I need to find room for, like, Fry in the sideboard, too. Play first, yes. I mean, our opponent just also had a really good hand. Now, this is obviously a mulligan. Come on! Oh, for... If I go... No, oh, this doesn't even come in. Yeah, no, mulligan. Great. Well, we're... I don't really want to go down to four. Uh, I guess I get rid of the... Oh, man. This is so awkward. This is so awkward on my mana. Because the rootbound Craig comes in tapped unless I keep the forest. And then I've got, like, three green but only one red. What's the other option? I get rid of the rootbound Craig, and then I've got no. Well, that's that's just like strictly worse, even though this is still really awkward. On the bright side, I do get to play my awesome three drops on turn two, so I guess there's that. Um, why do you get rid of two cards? Ugh. Okay. Um, so we're keeping the forest, the rootbound, and the mystic. We get rid of this, and we get rid of. this I guess okay well we got a chance here these ferocidons are going to be very strong I hope and uh, they are gonna get damage in that's that's good as well Uh, wow. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> I was kind of hoping to be able to uh, use that mana next turn. It's okay. Could be worse. Could be worse. Okay, well, you can't block now, so that's good news, I guess, at least. We have another... Okay, just draw me, like, just an untapped land, please. Just punished. Well, I'm definitely getting my beat down on. Okay. Um, this is so awkward and bad. Uh, like a mulligan to five is, is tough. And then with the, the tide binder, that's... Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a thing. That's a thing. I'm seriously, seriously tempted to use this Elvish Mystic to block this Storm Tamer next turn. I don't know if racing like this is smart, but I don't know how else I win this game. I I don't I don't know. And this worries me now. Like big time. <sighs> Did I not play a I didn't play a land oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I can still only cast one spell this turn anyway, so I don't know if I'm punished, but wow, is that... Wow, is that awkward and bad. Okay, I need to try and ambush my opponent here. I need to try and ambush my opponent. I don't know how else I do it, so... I need to go, like, Atarka's Command. Oh, come on, just don't be... Just don't be a Tidebinder Mage. Ugh.
I'm just totally getting tempoed out of this game. This is actually disgusting. I think I need this Tidebinder Mage gone more. But, like, this is... <sighs> this is not what I would call ideal. Okay, so... I take one by playing my creatures. That's the other thing. So I play a Spellbreaker. I go to five. I attack in. They go to three? Okay, maybe. Maybe... Maybe I can win this game still. Oh no, because they have, they can flash this in. So this trades with this. It still gets two damage in. This can't get blocked. They take a damage for... Okay, okay, so they still go to three. But if they have like a merfolk trickster or something here, then I'm just dead. Oh, I'm just dead anyway! Oh, come on, Andrew. I'm just dead anyway. I didn't even... Ugh. Unless they don't cast this. There we go. Right. Very close. Very, very close. Man, Tidebinder Mages and these things were just so good. And they'd be amazing. But you know what? We're two and two. We're going to go into round five. This is still a work in progress. This deck is not a final product. This is like something I kind of just threw, to get, threw together. We are learning about the format and we are learning about the deck. So let's try to learn a little bit more about it and see if we can uh, get our prize entry back with a win in round five. This has, been, this has been Andrew, Day 2 Dryden. I will see you there. Okay, like I said in the last round, I don't get to complain about my di uh, my player draws for a while because I've been on the play all five rounds. Fantastic. Andrew, Day 2 Dryden, coming here at you, and we've got a great opening hand. we got both colors of mana. we got a turn one mana dork. Nothing too much of a payoff to use with it, but a, a Earthshaker Kenner into a turn three collected company. Sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty, 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 pretty good. I won't lie. I am a fan of that kind of a rollout. Turn three collected company? I haven't cast one of those in... I don't want to say ever, but maybe ever. Actually, the nice thing about this too is if we're against an aggressive deck and they don't remove this mystic and nothing here really changes... We don't have to uh, take damage with the stomping ground next turn. Oh wait, no, we we oh no. Oh no, we, we might have to do it in the next turn though. Um, Tarkus command is strong. I kind of feel like I want them to block with this, but the other part of me just wants to get damage in. So I'm not really sure. I kind of have two minds about it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. What the heck is this? What the heck is this? It's a green green X. I guess it's an O1. When it comes in with x blah blah counters on it when it comes in you either double the counters or you have it fight okay neat well cool it's not too t ah i mean you two for one me or you you one for owed me or whatever but i mean i don't know you spent three mana to, i don't know that doesn't i don't know whatever um oh i can't I can't company this turn, so let's attack in. Sure. Uh, how do I want to do this? I guess I don't want a Rampager. I guess I'd rather a Tarka's. I 
think. I think I'd rather Atarkas. All right, so next turn we get to Collected Company. Turn four Collected Company is still an acceptable Collected Company. Excrement. We're playing against Excrement. Wow. Well, <laughs> hey, that's their word, not mine. Hey, that's the best. Oh, okay, I was going to say, that's the best you can do. What is this? I don't want any of these cards to do in this format. It's a 2 2 for 2. Okay. Enters the battlefield with a counter. So it's a 3 3 for 2. And then you. Uh, there's got to be hardened scales in this deck, right? One and remove a counter. It gains hexproof until end of turn. Now yeah, that's fine. I don't care about that. Hexproof is not something. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, new plan. We attack in and we Rampager if they block with this. And we're going to Bone Crusher this. Actually, you know, we're just going to Bone Crusher that. I'm just going to get this elf out of the way. Let me use this as a removal spell. Oh, this is so good. Gore Clan Rampager is so good. It's so good. Awesome. Um, if they hadn't been missing land drops, I might not have done that. But since they were, I think killing the Mystic was was the, the play. Um, it's a little annoying that they still did hit that third land drop, but what are you going to do? Are they just going to Coco? No, they get this thing. All right. Okay, and so this doubles the counters, eh? Yeah, okay, yeah, interesting. So it's a 4-5 four, for 4. It's not bad. Would have been nice to have this earlier on, but what are you going to do? Um, let's just Coco. Come on. I've been like hemming and hawing about this for whatever. This is, this is an amazing card. Oh, good. Oh, this is so good. All right. Bone Crusher and Oncrop. Yeah. Uh, okay. We don't have shuffle effects. So we're going to put the land. Uh, okay. So Rhythm followed by Elves followed by Ramuna followed by Forest. I guess that's technically the best line. Um, okay. So yeah. You attack. And you also attack and exert. Yeah. Maybe I should... No. Or maybe, yeah. Part of me was thinking about waiting until next turn, because then I can exert while also being able to swing in with this Bone Crusher Giant as well to get in more damage. But whatever. Five damage right now is good enough. Get that in. That was a good... That was a good... Collected Company. Oncrop Crasher is a great card. I. It's. It's so fair... Like, like it shouldn't be as good as it is, but it kind of just does enough in what you want it to do. All right, what's happening now? Hang her back. All right, well, that's a thing. That is a thing. <laughs> yep, uh, that works very well as well. So I think think we've just got it now because we swing in oh no i have to tap out for this okay well i have to tap out for this but we get at least two damage in and then we can just uh, kill them next turn if they don't gain life so i think that's what we do that was a good draw hazaret is almost always a good draw especially when you have it uh as one of the last cards in your hand oh i'm dumb I didn't need two. I have two damage in my hand. I didn't need to get another two damage. No, oh, whatever. That was stupid. All right. Well, whatever. Get that hanger back out of here before they start making way too many thopters. Oh, wait. No, we still have it like next turn because between Hazaret's ability and the Wild Slash, uh, there we've got four damage. 
So I think I still would make that same play to just like be aggressive and try to limit what they have on board. Uh, I mean, I don't know what they could really have. I mean, the only card that comes to my mind first off is actually Scavenging Ooze. So maybe adding more cards to the graveyard, more creature cards to the graveyard is actually a bad idea. But, or no, okay. You can tell I'm tired. This is ridiculous. So no, I did want to get two more damage in last turn because now I get to just untap and I've got, uh, I've got four damage. What are you doing? Would you let me draw, please? Thank you. Oops, don't do that. Undo. Discard this. What song is stuck in my head right now? Look, I know you've named yourself Excrement. Can, can we not just go to sideboarding, please? Thank you. Like, I, like, it's, like, what? Just, let's go to the next game. What, what do you, what are you doing here? All right. Um, Pithing Needle might be good. Ooh, Pithing Needle might be very good. We definitely want Searing Blood. So hopefully we actually draw them this game. Ah! Rampaging Ferocidon seems good as well. Um, I don't. Oh, and they're going to have Hardened Scales. They're going to have four copies of that, so I'm definitely bringing in that. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to have our creatures slam up against their creatures, and we want our creatures to win. So how does that work? Um, so I like this whole plan. Maybe Legion Loyalist is a little bit... Okay, so we added a two-drop here. Darkness King. We're adding a few two-drops. Um, maybe these mystics aren't, I don't know. I keep siding out the same kind of things. I, I feel like this deck isn't well, I feel like this deck is almost too balanced to begin with. Like it needs too much help from all of its parts. Like it's hard to switch things in and out. There's just so much creature combat going on. So we definitely want the searing bloods. We definitely want our things like this that help us pump dudes up. Maybe the Frost... No, the Frostodons are just going to be good. They, they just have to be good. Maybe I can squeeze one of these out. This card is probably really good at getting our creatures bigger than theirs, if we're going to, but I, I don't think the count... I think it's the counter spells that really make that... Like, make or break that card. Yeah, just giving them Riot is good, but it's more against control. Maybe this should actually just be in the sideboard. Hmm, maybe there's that. Yeah, maybe this should just be in the sideboard to begin with. That's probably a change I'll make after this league. All right. I like it like this. Let's try this. And let's uh, let's try to close out this league with, uh, with a win here. Uh, this is a strong hand. Turn to Gruel Spellbreaker. I like it. Keep. I like it. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I... Uh, I have the choice now between turn to Gruel Spellbreaker or keep them from doing anything uh yeah let's how about we play a land first like what do we do next turn <sighs> yeah i gotta i gotta get this if i don't get rid of this now even next turn like a gruel spellbreaker is pretty good but like they're gonna have one more mana for like multiple turns in a row because of this thing unless it just gets dealt with right now that's fine that's fine uh that's a good draw that's a good draw because it actually lets me use all my mana i like that i drew a one drop that's very convenient okay so just don't do anything super crazy and let me, let me start getting my big, beefy, angry fellows out on the board. Yeah, I'm not blocking, that's for sure. 
All right, so that Hydra would be annoying. That's fine. Another troll? Yeah, I can answer that. That's fine. So you only have two cards left in hand. Hopefully there are nothing too crazy and I can deal with them. Uh, yeah, I can get everything first strike here. No, I'm going to make this thing big anyway, so it's fine. I'm going to give it a plus one, plus one counter. All right, you're building up your board. I'm building up my board. Let's see what happens here. Oh no, this looks... No! Ah! Crap. Yeah, that looks strong. I don't think I have anything that answers that. Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, okay. Um. Jeez. Really need. I'm going to leave up an Atarka's command. I don't know how they're going to attack, but I want to leave up an Atarka's command and then maybe I can make some profitable block. If they swing with everything, I've got some pretty good blocks here, actually. I'll take six from this Hydra, but then I can. What the? Oh, Walking Ballista. That sucks. That's, that's pretty strong, actually. Swing with everything. Oh, you jerk. Okay. Ah! Yeah, I, their, their big stuff is bigger than my big stuff. Um... I mean, I have no, I have no good attacks. I might, if I'm lucky, have some good blocks but i have but i currently have no good attacks even with all the first strikiness i'm not sure how i'm going to power through this i need them to just dr start drawing poorly and of course they haven't been <laughs> this hydro was the this oh god stop drawing action Ugh, this hyd that Hydra was the big, the Hydra was the big deal. If it wasn't for the Hydra, I could have just started swinging in. But, maybe something like uh, Kari Zev's Expertise would be something I could uh, add to the deck that would help with something like that. I don't even know what I want to draw here anymore. Hazaret? I guess Hazaret would be okay. That would be, that would be good. Um... That has possibilities. No, the big thing is this stupid Hydra. I can't get through this Hydra profitably. I don't know how I actually end up dealing with this. I almost think I'm going to need to draw like a Gore Clan Rampager to be able to get big enough to deal with this stupid thing. Um, I guess this. Let's say this can't block. I don't know if it wants to anyway, but... Does that fizzle the ability? It probably will, eh? That's kind of cute. Yeah, that's a cute, that's a cute interaction. Okay. I... Honestly, I think the only way we get through this game is, and even if they draw like nothing, they can just keep making this ballista huge. I need a, uh, like a destructive revelry, like right away. So like the best thing they can possibly do is just gun down like my four small creatures. But 
Uh, can someone explain that to me? Oh, and then you shoot them. Ah, I see. I see, I see. So how does this work? So if I block them, you then... Interesting. Yeah, this uh, sucks. Uh, you only get to kill one of them that way, though. So I here, I have to do this now. Actually, you know what? I don't even have to put my big stuff in front of it if I do this. I just put my little stuff in front of it. I think I'm actually even okay with this one dying. That means I get to bring it back bigger. All right, let's go to blocks. Um, okay. So I definitely want this thing to go away because it means I can bring it back. I don't care about this card. Um, sure, something like that. Something like, actually, you know what? I shouldn't have put this one here. It gives them the option to not not kill this. That was that was silly. I shouldn't have put the second one there. That was a mistake. Oh. Okay, maybe the pithing needle needs to be a thing. Oh god. Okay, whatever. Just F six. Like, can we just? I'm, it's very possible I might just fast forward through this game. I might play this, uh, I might record this at like two times speed or something. I also think that Pithing Needle might come in for the Walking Ballista. It's definitely a thing. It's definitely a thing. Uh, I mean, like, it's really bad here, right? They can just, like, make a, you know, add a counter, shoot it. But, like, I... Blocking here doesn't make sense. I guess I could have blocked here as well, but then this thing actually does die. I think I'm in a pretty bad position with this board state anyway. I guess if I could do it again... Oh, they just let this happen. That's fine with me. Yeah, I was going to say... Ugh. Well, whatever. At least that other thing's gone. Sure. Come on. Okay, I'm going to the next game. I'm, I'm, I'm not winning this game. I can't beat this board state. Like, uh, I might play it out if I... No, that's not true. If I wasn't recording, I still wouldn't do that. Okay, Pithing Needle is coming in. Pithing Needle is absolutely coming in. Uh, this needs to come in. What was bad? What was awkward? Um... This didn't help much, surprisingly enough. It, it like wasn't impactful enough. As much as it helps in combat, uh, trade off like with the first strike and all that. It it doesn't. I, it's almost. I don't think it matters. Yes, play first. Come on. <sighs> Mulligan. Why are my game threes? I mean, oh, come on. Oh, okay, they mulligan to six as well. I I can't I can't keep this. I cannot keep this hand. This is a good hand. I wish I had double red for this searing blood. 
We are keeping this hand. We're going to have Ferocidon on turn two, uh, or Kenra. Okay, so we got to get rid of the Atarkas command. It's just the other cards are just proactive. Um, I want all of these. I don't have... Oh, this is such a strong card. I have to keep this card. You know what? I'm going to get rid of the Kenra because I'm hoping for a turn two for Ocidon, and we're just going to try to ride that and we're going to try and we're going to try and get another red source so that we can Searing Blood. Okay. I would also be very happy to draw a Destructive Revelry, obviously. Please, please, please. Please, please, please. Please, please, please. If not, Ferocidon is an acceptable turn two play. So be it. What crazy, busted stupidity is our opponent going to do? They have six cards in hand, for goodness sakes. Six! Ugh. Ugh. Oh, this damn ballista. <laughs> okay, please just draw me a removal spell for this thing. Please. Come on. I really... Ugh. Okay. The one good thing is I have removals over this. The bad thing... The one bad piece of bad news is that they get to uh, just shoot me and then they don't get this. So it was a removal spell, but definitely not the one I wanted. But I, I, I that needed to get off the board. Ugh. Okay, at least this still keeps getting through. Um, good enough. <sighs> Come on, Ferocidon. Come on, Ferocidon. <sighs> okay. So these hash sheep things can start working on the Ferocidon. Costs four, effectively, okay. So if we just keep drawing lands, we can do that. Uh, that's definitely not what we wanted to see happen. Please let me untap. Please don't just kill my Ferocidon. Let me untap, let me untap, let me untap. Because if I untap, then I can use the Oasis to save the Ferocidon. Okay. I'm sort of okay with that. Okay. If they don't block this, I think I have to use the Oasis. If they do block, I also think I have to use the Oasis. It's got Menace. It has Menace. Nice try. Don't you dare forget about that. Okay. Oh, because you can only do it when you cast a sorcery. Oh, God. 
<sighs> All right, so my opponent didn't know this had Menace, and I didn't know that this was, like, a thing, so that's great. All right, well, the other thing that means is that I have to use this now, because otherwise um, it won't deal nearly as much damage, which is <sighs> frustrating. And I might even just be dead. They put another counter on this that becomes a 4 4. It's close. It's pretty darn close. We've been just getting edged out in these games. In a couple of these game threes, we've been like just getting edged out. And I've had to mulligan down to five in a couple of them, which is a little fresh. It's, I don't know, it. It doesn't feel like an eternal format when things like that happen. It feels more like a standard or like a draft format when you're like, I don't know, just because the power level of uh, of the of eternal cards. Oh, you got to be kidding me! This is such a combo. Oh, wait, can't you just do this? Yeah, can't you make six... Oh, I guess six mana isn't any different than four mana. Oh, that... Okay, so... Wait, do I have th any three damage spells? No! Ugh, I don't have any bolts or anything. I don't have anything that deals three. Ugh. Not being able to have light lava spikes or lightning bolts is, like, just actually killing me. But I think it also shows that maybe something like Skewer the Critics should go in this deck. Why wouldn't you attack first? Oh, because you're not planning on attacking. Okay. Oh, right, because I have this Ramunap Ruins. So you can't go down to two. That would have been good last turn. If I had had the Atarka's Command and the Gore Clan in the opposite order, I think I would win. <laughs> Instead, I'm sitting here not quite able to close this out. Uh, Kate. Uh, red, green, generic, generic. Okay, we're, I, we're not just dead. But we're awfully close. Actually, we might be dead. It depends on this ballista. If they can activate it twice, we're in very big trouble. <sighs> oh, man. If they can activate it twice. Oh, my God. What is... Ah, this is so frustrating. Ah. Ah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you got to think about this one. You don't just... Okay, sure. Okay. I don't know if I have any cards that deal just three. I don't think I... Well, that definitely doesn't. Look, I try to have fun, and I, I did have... And honestly, I did have fun, and I learned, and, and, and that is really the takeaway... I'm also just exhausted, and I like winning, and I I, I, I do I like winning. So that's that's too bad we weren't able. It just feels like we could have got it, and our deck just didn't. I don't know. You know what? We experimented. We tried new stuff. Let's go to the deck tech screen and see what changes we might make. It's been Andrew Day Two Dryden. I will see you there. All right, 
it's almost midnight i'm exhausted so i think we said we were gonna throw a couple of these over here that seems smart um i mean okay so and i want it to fit in maybe frosted on goes over here too maybe i can trim on a here let's how does it look this way Maybe I can trim one of these. I don't want this to be too high. The rest of this seems okay. We're down to 56. So what if we add in skewers there? Oop, there we go. So what if we do this? I mean, it's in this pile, but it's not really. The other thing was card draw. You know, we didn't actually have a lot of card draw. So maybe I actually shave one of these. And I could put a... Uh, could put a light up the stage in. I really wish I had remembered about the Haship Oasis being uh, only at sorcery speed. It's really it that's that's really too bad that might have made a difference in that game that might have been the three damage we needed to force through oh well don't dwell on it andrew don't dwell on it um i i really like the one drops into the i wish i had more two drops i'll say that i wish i had more two drops so maybe we take out an Ancroft crasher maybe we put in like a kari zev that could be something okay that doesn't look too bad uh, what else? What else? The removal wasn't the best. We could have had more of these, maybe. So maybe we add one of these, remove these. We're at 16 still. Maybe take out one of these, because even when it was really good, we only brought in so many, right? We can only, we still need to play our game. I think something like this is what I would go with off the top of my head. But it's a it's still pretty fresh. Um, the mana was also a little bit the the green mana we didn't usually struggle with, but the red mana was was the problem. So maybe I even take out one of these and add in one of these. Maybe that's better. All right. So off the top of my head, this is what I would play with if I were going to jump into a league again right away. I'm not because I'm exhausted, <laughs> but this is what I would do. So let me know what you think about Pioneer. Let me know if you've had similar experiences with this format. Let me know what you've seen, um, what you thought of the deck, different cards. Because honestly, I, I, I've been around since the standard pool was around, or like since all these standard sets have come through, but I'm forgetting about cards. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Um, you know, uh, one card I thought about but I, I didn't like was Goblin Chain Whirler. I think the triple red is a little hard for this mana base. Um, we already saw how hard even just getting two red sometimes could be. So uh, there's that. But yeah, so let me know what you think about this deck. Let me know if you would make any changes, what they'd be, because I will. I'm, I'm, this is sort of the kind of thing I'm probably going to experiment with going forward. Either way, this has been Andrew. Day 2 Dryden. Thank you again to all the patrons supporting this channel. Man, those Veil of Summers were expensive. And uh, I'm burning away ticks in these these uh, these leagues that i can't seem to win my win my entry back with so i uh, hope you have a great rest of your day please subscribe to the channel and i will see you was there anything else i want to talk about no i don't think so i will see you next time